Hi, I'm Kristen and today I'm going to talk about labeling quilts. So I've got eight different ways you can label your quilts. If you want to skip straight to the methods and how you can do it, there's timestamps in the description. But before I go through all of those, I'm going to talk about first of all why we should be labeling our quilts and second what we should be putting on quilt labels or options of things we could be putting on quilt labels. So first of all, why would we label our quilts? Um, there's a few reasons. Some of them are personal reasons and some of them are kind of for history and things like that. So first one is it adds a nice personal touch, especially if you're giving it as a gift. So if it says um, who the gift is to and who it's from and you maybe put something personal in or the, the occasion perhaps when uh, the quilt was given, that could be a nice touch. It just makes it feel that little bit more handmade and homemade and all that stuff. Um, but there's also a reason why we should be labeling quilts for history. So believe it or not, <laughs> um, historians study quilts and quilt making over the years. Um, so even if you think your own quilts are not historically significant, um, you might be wrong because um, it isn't just about, um, you know, super well-known quilters or super artistic quilters or anything like that. Um, there'll be people who, for example, have studied Civil War quilts, and there will definitely be people, if there aren't already before too long, studying quilts made during the Black Lives Matter movement or quilts made by during the pandemic lockdowns or for my own, which some of my quilts were made during <laughs> lockdowns, but also I started quilting almost as a result of the pandemic or it was encouraged because of that environment. So there's probably people already starting to think about studying that or maybe already looking into it. So even if you think your individual quilt isn't historically significant as part of a wider um, movement of something that happened in time it is now historians obviously have a much easier job with us than with our predecessors because we're posting stuff on instagram and social media all the time but in order to link the social media posts and things to the actual quilt when we're if we're talking 20 30 years from now it would certainly help to have a name and some information on the quilt to be able to otherwise you're never going to link the two and figure it all out now the one that i think is most significant uh, for me personally is family history. So I would want to put um, information about who made the quilt. So in, in my case, me, <laughs> you know, um, where the city I was in, where I was, what the occasion was, the date. Um, and that's kind of so in generations to come, because obviously I'm hoping some of these get passed on as, as heirlooms, and we probably all kind of hope that. Um, they'll know who made it, you know, was it auntie, was it grandma, whoever, you know, on which side of the family. Um, and it just, it, rather than just having a quilt, no one knows whether you bought it or whether the auntie who sews made it or not, you know. Um, and there are, you know, some families have um, family tree buffs and they would be interested in this kind of stuff. So um, so that's another, another reason. The last reason... Um, is because you don't know where your quilting life is going to take you. So uh, we might think we're just, you know, having fun and we're never going to, I certainly don't have any intention of putting my quilts into competitions or anything like that, but who knows, you know? So maybe 20 years from now, you're suddenly some big art quilter or, <laughs> or something, or you've won quilt con, who knows? then you might want to see the history of where your quilts have come from. So you just might want a personal record of, oh, I made that one before I made this one, or, you know, that in that kind of way, so that if you were ever talking about your quilting life, whether it's on a small scale to your own quilt guild, or who knows what in the future, you'd have a timeline of when you made your quilts kind of thing. So that one's probably less less pressing for me and most people, but it's something to think about. So what to include on a quilt label. So the name of the person who made it uh, and anyone who helped you make it. So for example, uh, 
if you pieced it, but you had a long arm or quilted, you might want to say quilted by and put their name, especially if you're putting in a show, but it might be worth doing just uh, as out of politeness or for the history side of it as well um, on a quilt label. I would put, if I'm ever using somebody else's pattern, then I would put the name of the pattern. Um, and, I, and if I'm not using somebody else's pattern, I do tend to put either just made by me and then I assume people could follow it back to my YouTube or my blog, or I have for a couple put, um, ma what did I put pieced, quilted and designed by Kristen Hubert. Um, so it depends. Uh, so the other things to include would be who is it for? So you can put their first name or their whole name, um, the city where it was made. Um, some people would even put where it was gifted if that was a different place. But I mean, you, you've got to kind of pick and choose what you're going to put on the label. You can't be like writing a novel on the back of your quilt. But um, And what's important kind of. So for me, it would be mostly my name, the city. So for me, Edinburgh and the date. And I often, I usually include the month and the year. Um, maybe you might, if it was a birth for a birthday or an anniversary or a wedding, you might put the whole date that were like the date that you're gifting it as opposed to <laughs> the, you obviously didn't make it all that day. Um, but I usually put the month I finished it in and the year, uh, and you can also include, um, you know, a little message, uh, you know, with love to my favorite grandson or something, <laughs> um, for, on his birthday or for his graduation or, or, or a little saying or some sort of words of encouragement, depending on what the, what the quilt is for. Um, but again, obviously you have to, there's some effort involved, more effort in some of these quilt label methods than others. So you have to kind of decide how much do I really want to include here? How much is that information really important? So, um, I've got a link in the description to, um, a blog post that probably more clearly lays out some of the options of what to put in the label, uh, and has links to the things that I'm talking about here. I've got some links in the description as well. Um, and a few other options for quilt labels that I'm not going to talk about in here because I haven't tried all of those. But anyway, today I'm going to talk about eight different ways now that we can put our quilt labels together, make them ourselves, buy them, etc. So some of them are easier than others, but let's get started. So this is one of the earlier quilt labels I ever did. So it's on a scrap of denim, on a, the back of a denim quilt, and I used the letter stitching on my Janome machine just to include um, the name of the pattern, uh, my name, and roughly when it was finished. I've also used the stitching on my Bernina machine. I've done it on fleece. I've done it on cotton. It's hard to see in this picture, but this is it done on fleece, and it's for a wedding quilt, so it's got the whole date on it there. And in order to attach the labels, I just used um, like a bond web kind of thing um, to attach it temporarily. And then I um, hand uh, turned, hand turn applique, that's what you call it, right? <laughs> when you put the raw edges under um, to attach it. Of course, you if you have an actual embroidery module or setting on your machine, then you can make even fancier embroidered labels than these. But this is sort of the basic machine embroidery um, that you can do with most machines. Method two is simple hand embroidery. So I used some uh, embroidery floss and just stitched in Made With Love for Carolyn and Family, designed, pieced, and quilted by Kristen Hubert, 2021, Edinburgh, Scotland. And that was for a Christmas gift for my sister. Um, so it depends how neat you are with your embroidery. And this one took me a while, so I'm not sure I would use that method again in a hurry, to be honest. So method three is fabric pens. So this is pretty simple. You're just going to write your label. Um, you just use it on plain cotton fabric. I had a scrap of this paper that looks basically like lined paper. So I decided to use that. And uh, for this one, I was using um, this prim 
marker and it actually came with like it's it's meant to, it's sold to to put like kids uh na late name labels on their clothes and stuff so i used that for this one but there's another type of pen um which i've also used for a similar method which i'm going to show you later on and i'll put the links to everything in the description but you basically just write your label my handwriting is not great it's pretty childish but this was for a, a baby quilt so i thought it was okay um I just put sort of made by Auntie Kristen and the date. Um, I didn't uh, put the the town and everything for this one. So it just kind of depends what mood I'm in, how complete I want to be with my quilt labels. And you can make your own choices. Um, so, but once I'd done the writing, you could use some heat and bond to put it in place. But for this one, I just ironed down the two edges and then pinned it in place in the corner of the quilt, the unfinished quilt, before I bound it. And then I sewed down the two edges, um, basically in between the quilt and the binding. So those raw edges are hidden. And then I only had to hand stitch down the two sides. So anything to get away from too much hand stitching is what I'm always looking for. I have, I did wash this quilt before I gave it and the, the handwriting stayed fine. So, um, so if my handwriting was better, I would use this label more often. So maybe I just need to take some calli calligraphy lessons or something like that. Method four is to use actual quilt fabric that's printed as labels. So this kind of fabric, you can get different varieties. You basically just cut out one label and you can sew it on. And some of them, there's a place for you to put who it's for or who it's from. And some of them are just, you know, they just indicate that it was handmade uh, in the label and you don't actually have to write anything. So depending on which one you choose and what you want to include, you might need to also do some kind of hand embroidery or use a fabric pen uh, in order to obviously make your label complete. Um, I've got uh, an image here of the salvage for this one, Timeless Treasures Fabrics of Soho. I, I mean, I got it on eBay in one of my hauls, so I don't know if it's still available, but you can probably ask at your local quilt shop if they have anything similar. Method five is printable fabric. So this is one of, of many on the market. Um, it's called a photo fabric. It's on printable um, poplin cotton and it's like an A4 size so it fits in your uh, home printer. Importantly you need an inkjet printer. I'll explain to you a bit more why. Um, but in order to use this uh, this for a quilt label you kind of need to design a label on your computer. So I'm going to show you how to do that for free and then I'll show you um, the next steps of how to print this and use it. So first we're going to go to canva.com uh, C-A-N-B-A.com, if you can't see that up there. Um, I actually pay for my account because I use it for other things, but if you, there is a free version and uh, everything I'm going to show you, you can do on the free plan, so don't worry about that. So we're going to go to create a design and I'm going to type in label. And there's different sizes, so you can do like any size, like for a mailing thing or... Um, you know, if you want, depending what size you want your quilt label, and you can also do a custom size if there's a specific size, but I'm going for just the six by four inch label. Um, and then it's going to open up a new page, and this is like your kind of label canvas. So you could start from blank, but they also have templates. So we just sort of look through here and see something we might want to start with. I have to keep in mind that my printer is black and white, not in color, but you can change any of the colors. So let's let's just choose this one. Um, oh no, that one you can't change the color. So some of them you can, some of them you can't. So we'll delete that. Um, well, there, there you go. So we, I was able to delete that big colorful thing that's not going to print very well on my printer. Um, and then I would put... Um, something like hang on made with love or homemade or whatever something like that um and then i would put if it was me right i would put by kristen hubert and then uh i would put edinburgh scotland 2021 um, if I'm actually doing a quilt label for myself, I often, if I know, um, you know, if it's after the fact, then I would normally put the month in, um, I would put the pattern designer if it's not something I've, uh, come up with myself. Um, there's lots of things people like to put on, on quilt labels. 
Um, so I don't like the spacing here. So what I can do is, I'm not even sure I have to highlight it. I think I just have to be in the box. So this little thing is spacing up here. So I'm going to put letter spacing and I'm going to bring it down so that it's more like that. Yeah, I think I like it like that. And then I can lose that comma. Um, and then I'm going to make all of these black. And you can put like, so I just put by, but you could also put, you know, pieced by so-and-so, quilted by someone else if you use a long armor or you're doing a group quilt or something like that. And then maybe I think that's a bit plain and I want to add something. So I might, I'm going to move that whole thing down and then I'm going to go elements and I'm going to go sewing and see what they've got. So I've used like a sewing machine before, but that's cute. Now this is in the pro plan, so I don't know if that's in the free one, but so I could put that up there, but let's find something that's free. Um, so that one's free. So I could put that. So let's say, I mean, most of my stuff's not my machine, but let's say, let's say it was like something I had hand sewn. That would be a cute thing to put up there. Uh, and you could like make a border or whatever. And if you've got a color printer, you can go to town, right? Um, so then it says print stickers up here, but um, I'm not going to do that. So uh, one, I can save that as a template into a, so the, I think the folders are only in the paid plan. So, um, so probably you can't do that, but I'm going to just go ahead and save that. So we're not going to print stickers, which is an option they've got here because you can kind of print things from this program. What we're going to do is download it as a PDF. Download. And then, um, so I'm going to show you the pa the paper that I use, which is not paper, it's fab printable fabric that you can put through your home printer. So you would really want to put more than one on a sheet probably, right? So, um, so these are some other ones that I made for specific quilts. So this one says, um, you know, made by Kristen Humor, homemade in Edinburgh in the month. And then this has got what I've called the, the quilt. I've named it the beast. And then it's got the pattern name and the pattern maker here. And then I've put um, assembled in four sections, quilt as you go. It's just a bit of information about how I made that particular quilt. Um, I've got a video about that, so you might have seen that one. And then this one is one that I haven't actually made yet, but it's a Christmas present for my sister. So her name is Carolyn. So made with love for Carolyn and family. And then I know I'm going, I'm not going to use a pattern. I'm going to just, I want to do my own thing. Um, and so then I put my name and just the year because I don't know what month I'm going to finish it <laughs> before Christmas. And, um, and then the town in Scotland. So, okay. So, but I'm going to put a, get a new document here just to show you how you would. So we're in the document. So then you go insert. No, I do it up here. Sorry, up here in the menu, up here, insert. And it gives you this drop down and then you go to object and then from file and then I'm going to go to my downloads and find that one. There it is. That one there. And there's the label. And then I can, and because you can only run the sheets through the printer once, you might want to copy and paste that so that you've got two on one page. And then you, and if you had something more like the other ones that I've got this one then I've sort of put a few spaces in here so that when I cut it I've got because if I'm going to sew on a border or just turn the edges in and sew it down or something I want to ha have enough space in between so I just um, add a few hard returns in between the labels so I'm not going to use the ones that I so and the, these other ones that look a bit fancier I've just used a different template to start from so if we go back to templates here um so there's the one so there's a, that's a free one this this is the one i started with for the one for my sister and i just changed the colors and the added different text because i can't um can't print the color and then this is the other one that's on the pro plan with the b but uh, i didn't use the b i took the b out and put a, a different icon the sewing machine icon in but and there's plenty of other ones that are free that you could have fun with this one free that one's free. so this one's free it's quite pretty for example um and this one look you can change the color of the background here so you could i could just change that to black and that would print on my printer 
and then I could, you know, put my name in and stuff here. So there's loads of cool labels you can make um, with this. So I will now uh, get off the computer and um, show you how it comes out. So you just print it like a regular piece of paper um, and then you're going to leave it to set for half an hour and then I'll come and show you the next steps. So here they are printed on this lovely fabric paper and I will show you the next step in a second. Okay, so the instructions on this are to peel back the paper once the ink has dried. Peeling it back. And it's just like a nice thin piece of paper, which is cool, or not paper, fabric, it's poplin. Right. Um, I can already see that the one bit to me looks a bit too faint, the bit with the pattern. So I don't know if I'm going to have to go over that bit with some embroidery thread or something, or just I, maybe I can see how it comes out in the wash and then decide what I want to do. But anyway, um, it says to run it under cold water under the tap for 30 seconds. So let's do that. been 30 seconds probably and it says or until the it says 30 seconds or until the water runs clear and it seems to already be clear to me really so that's it soaking wet and then I'm going to put it somewhere to dry and then we'll come back and see what it looks like okay so they're sitting here in front of my queen size quilt as you go quilt which some of you have seen because I wanted to show you the label so I've got to kind of turn around backwards a little bit here so um this one uh was my attempt at printing on fabric so um this is the printable fabric that I was just talking about but um because I didn't have the inkjet printer uh it didn't come out uh, as I intended, it was really, really faint. So what I did was use a pen that's made, which I'll show you on the screen, which is made for writing on fabric and I outlined. So I made a label in Canva and printed it out on the fabric. That worked fine, except it wasn't strong enough. And then I just traced around with this marker and then I added another bit at the top so my handwriting is terrible so this is not my favorite <laughs> um label method but um anyways this one says the beast because that's what I have called the quilt because it felt like a beast to make pattern Rojas quilt by Weisscraft assembled in four sections quilt as you go because I thought that was interesting detail to include made by Kristen Hubert Hubert homemade in Edinburgh July 2021 so and then I, I machine sewed it on the not the not the neatest attachment method but anyway um so that's how that one turned out I wish I had an inkjet printer because I think that would make the labels so much prettier and that was my intention with this one but I had to kind of make do with the printer I had method seven is to use the printable fabric, these labels that we just uh, made in Canva as a base for hand embroidery. So the eagle eye among you might have seen when we were in Canva there, that sort of art deco looking label for my sister, the one that was that you've already seen as method two hand embroidery. I actually started with a Canva label as my base. So I otherwise probably wouldn't have stitched this quite as neatly. Um, so I just uh, stitched through over the the printed writing because it was really quite faint because I just I have a mono printer so this this kind of fabric just doesn't work with it so if you're wanting to use these labels without the fabric or the embroidery it has to be an inkjet and the last method for making your own labels is the easiest get them custom made so you don't have to make them at all so these are some uh, carved wooden ones that just say handmade by Kristen. Somebody bought me these as a gift. So you can get simple ones like th these, or you can get ones um, with more detail that are actually on fabric. So you can find all sorts of custom 
uh, labels for sale on Etsy and probably other places as well. Um, but you send them in exactly the wording that you want. And some of them will have little designs and things they can put on. So you can get a batch that just has your name and handmade and you can get ones that are much more specific with the date and the occasion and things like that. So I will uh, link to this, uh, some of these in the description. So that's it. I hope this video has given you some good ideas for labeling your own quilts. And I'd love to know if you use any other methods because I'm always up for trying something different. If you like videos like this, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications and leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought. Thanks so much for spending time with me. Bye.